morning, everyone. Thank you for your participation in this new uh, thematic panel. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm uh, with Margaret Mendel, is a director of Kalpolani uh, Institute. My name is Timothy Duberger. I'm engineer in Sciences Po Bordeaux. And uh, we have the daunting task of facilitating this task. First of all, we would like to take this opportunity to announce the creating before Joseph of a think tank dedicated to research issues and local policy, social and solidarity economy because in the international recognition phase, which is closed with the adoption by UN of a resolution in favor of SLE, now we have uh, issues relating to this implementation and dissemination of uh, public policy. And in the previous panel, we said it, it's about construction of uh, uh, instruments. And in GSEF, we are going to co-facilitate a working group to observe these dynamics and support them to make sure that uh, we have uh, a collective understanding on this issue in line with SDG. It's about mobilizing SSE forth at the service of uh, the achievement of these uh, goals. I think this group will be important. I think if you may add anything to that, Margaret, maybe to just add that we have started this work with GCF under the leadership of Lawrence Koch. We partnered with uh, United Nations Research Institute on development on six case studies on local policy and thereafter we have a summary document. The objective is to equip local governments to better act, to better support the emergence and consolidation and growth of SSE in their respective territories. I'm coming from Quebec where we have a long tradition of collaboration and partnership between researchers and partners and it is in the same spirit that this uh, uh, working group was set up. This is a collaboration between uh, SSE actors, researchers, the academia, or researchers that are I think thanked in various uh, international institutions. Our objective is to to share the findings which will be useful for uh, dissemination and sharing of uh, knowledge, sharing of best practices. We are going to produce uh, working papers and uh, our ambition is by in two years time to have a, a collection of texts. But still in the spirit of research, but it's about research for action, research for uh, implementation of public uh, policy among between actors, uh, representatives from various institutions. Thank you. So this is a uh, research action momentum. And we're going to kick start this panel, which is the uh, launch of this work which will lead to a publication so the next forum will be to be held in borough will be an opportunity so we are in the heart of the topic because the panel is on the relationship between SSE and sustainable development linking practice practices to research so we'll focus on the issue of transitioning informal economies towards uh, collective and sustainable economies. What do you need to keep in mind? Uh, according to the ILO figures, we have 2,000 people globally that work in the informal sector. And this is marked uh, by heterogeneity, 
and this is 61 percent of global employment and 50 percent if we withdraw the agricultural share. So informal sector is the norm and that's what you have to keep in mind and this is present in a number of uh, geographic areas, continents, it's uh, present in Africa, we have seen it all across the day, in particular in Senegal, but it's uh, a general trend across Africa, in Asia, in the Pacific, in South America. So we'll have representative from Africa, but also from South America. They are the two continents that have developed collective forms of uh, uh, economy. So that's what we need to shed light on during this plenary or this panel with important issues. How do we do this transition from informal economy to collective and sustainable economies? What role can SSS play? This idea according which there is like inform if do we have informal economy and informal economy, do we have a third way? Is it just a transition? Is there a third way? So we have a number of questions that may be raised. So we're going to give the floor, now that we present issues at stake with regard to this panel. So it's a theoretical formalization. We have research uh, uh, issues, given the diversity. It's about thinking about all those elements. Um, I'm going to hand over to Margaret, who is going to present the speakers. So we'll give them the floor, and then we'll take uh, questions from the audience. With uh, everything Timothy has just said, we have tried to thought of uh, pick three questions for our panel members, or 3.1. Questions are as follows. Which role can SS, SS, SSE play in favor of uh, decent work? Is transition from formal economy to informal economy desirable? Which public policy should we prioritize? And which uh, new research do we need? Now I have to introduce our three panel members. We have others that are yet to join or they could not make it this morning. So the order of passage, first of all, we're going to give the floor to a long-standing friend, Professor Abdul Salam Fall, he's the director of research with head of uh, doctoral training at the University Sheikh Antajob of Dakar. And he will be followed by Leandro Morris, uh, researcher professor from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And lastly, we have Madame Colombia Perez Munoz, director of, of INDESCO, Institute of uh, Solidarity and cooperative economy and cooperative from the university, Cooperative University of Colombia. We give about 15 minutes to each of you to come on stage and we'll have time for questions and answers after the three presentations. Thank you, enjoy the panel. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to communicate with the public, the global citizens that are engaged in SSE. And I would like to tell you that I highly appreciate your initiative asking me to take the floor. As for the three questions that you have asked, I'm going to structure them around uh, three answers. The first answer is consider that SSE should be should open to scientific 
evidence and be open to the world. Because in terms of articulation among practices and uh, research between practices and research, the first thing is to create conditions for this opening so much so that we take into account scientific evidence and it is in this way that we're going to open to the world so social and solidarity economy is rooted in territories but it needs that its interaction with the world uh, with its environment because we actually realize that uh, there is an acceleration of uh, scientific innovation, scientific inventions, and we have a discussion at the national and international level, and these discussions are around issues pertaining to the planet as a whole with uh, different degrees. And these questions that are raised at the global level have to do with climate change, for example, or the issue of artificial intelligence, or what we can call post-quantic inventions. Because it's demonstrated today that a good part of the technology we're using this technology will be obsolete in the next two to three years. And we are going to get into a obsolete phase which uh, leads to a renewal of devices, of equipment, and we have to follow these uh, inventions. And experiences that are underway we have indicators about the welfare index. We have a number of uh, dynamics, we, and we need to be conversant with those dynamics. We also made an assessment of uh, the shocks and crises that the world has gone through recently, in particular with COVID-19 pandemic or with the Russian-Ukraine crisis. Our assessment of this we have a global trade on international relations among between countries of the south and countries of the south etc among issues that call for a close monitoring we have the change dynamic around the un system So as part of uh, countries of the South, so the surveillance, uh, the monitoring which is done, we have the epistemology of the South. And this is a way of rethinking the world based on our own cultural genius and based on our own inventions which were overlooked for a number of decades. So the epistemologies of, South, of the South and uh, the progress on the uh, on this monitoring, we need to take stock of the research that have been conducted as part of COVID-19, and we need to monitor the emergence of zoonoses, which is the framework by which um, new epidem epidemics are developed. So the biological and animal genetics are in, an important area which actually uh, requires to monitor the scientific evidence. We should also be interested in the redrafting of the is history of people. And we need to analyze uh, vulnerabilities that we observed at the global level and at country level. So the progress of digital technology is an in crucial area because this contributes to democrat democratizing innovation and access to scientific information. Scientific information, technological information, 
or even information and the evolution of people at the social cultural uh, level. You see, if I had to continue listing all this, we'll not get through. But this just shows that in these various areas, we have scientific evidence. And the real issue in uh, the dialogue we should develop is to call upon research institutions, university institutions on their strategy to manage knowledge so that scientific information, scientific evidence be available from SSE actors uh, in the perspective of sustainable development. And it's uh, urgent that institution, research institution, the academia have uh, knowledge management services so that they can make them available to actors in an accessible manner. Therefore, in this uh, regard, we are all called upon on the pedagogy of scientific evidence to assume the visibility of scientific evidence, the visibility and accessibility of scientific evidence. We should also think about uh, the documentation to disseminate scientific technical uh, information, notably the issue of uh, scientific publishing for social and solidarity economy. So this is an area where we do not have a lot of documentation to disseminate knowledge, to share knowledge at the international level. So challenges on scientific publishing is crucial. But we should also work to edu towards education and science in order to establish the extension of scientific culture. COVID-19 has shown how diffusion of rumor, fake news has made impossible the execution of uh, institution plan or access to vaccines, but also respect for treatment that have been established by the scientific world. Rumor management requires that we have the capacity to develop a scientific culture at the level of people. And then this uh, scientific education will allow us to work towards the democratization of the knowledge management system. I would like to answer the second question now, to address the second, second question by proposing what we call here like embarked research. In the relationship between actors of social and solidarity economy uh, as part of sustainable development and research institutions and academic institutions, it is useful to engage in what Quebec people called partnership research, and here we call it embarked research. In other words, social movements, design their development program and uh, they get the support of uh, research institutions, research laboratories and by agreement, by a common agreement, they contribute to developing the research objective to co-produce -pro the basis for the research protocol in such a way that the findings be known by social movement because the latter have participating in monitoring the evolution of research activity in order to leverage those results. And in this regard, one of the most urgent tasks is what we can call the systematization of uh, knowledge and experience resulting from social movement and SSE actors around SDGs, but also around common uh, good. So it's about developing positive complicity between uh, uh, researchers in their laboratory in order to develop uh, partnership research. And also highlight uh, 
highlight uh, scientific evidence in order to develop more reflexivity research support uh, field actors in order to promote reflexivity on uh, practices of SSE actors. And uh, it's about also working towards uh, highlighting the will to learn together, to learn on processes, but also to lay the groundwork for uh, social and solidarity economy. And to do that, we actually need to build partnership at the, at the medium and long term. Lastly, to answer the, la the address the last question, we need to articulate everything around our new bets, that is the bet on SSE research in sustainable development. And that's where I'm going to close. And in order to do that, one of the strategies is to take stock of research in Africa. And this is strongly dominate, dominated by thematic uh, topics made by uh, international organizations. And they define their priorities without actually having multi-stakeholder consultation which help to define the research agenda. In other words, those who finance research, they dictate the research agenda. And that's what we're going through in the institution in which we're working. We need to have a paradigm shift and pro promote uh, territorial anchoring and work towards uh, highlighting proximity so that we scale up what is being developed in the territories in uh, proximity and this should be scale up and this scaling up process is one of the important areas of research we also need for that to develop consultation consultations co-production and common learning in order to define the agenda of research and this is what I call embarked research and for all this the agenda seems to be drawn up in such in a way by the UN resolution on the promotion of social and solidarity economy in sustainable development and this agenda is crystal clear and uh, this uh, agenda of the UN resolution make it possible to monitor the processes and modalities of the involvement of international financial org organization in particular the need to set up dedicated funds for SSE it's uh, up to research to follow all the processes that led to the development of these dedicated funds but also their administration and the results that these results this research will produce at the level of SSE uh, players analyzing mechanism to analyze uh, the quality so all actors from local government states uh, or international institutions or network of actors of SSE, we need to put in place uh, corporate incubators because we all know any organization to grow needs to be protected, to be accompanied and supported uh, around quality. And this has to do with its uh, growth level. Therefore, it's uh, crucial to work around this perspective of analyzing uh, mechanism for the monitoring of SDG. So we also talked about satellite accounts over the past two days. So Catalan uh, accounts actually allow us to have in national statistics, or in local and international statistics, some dedic statistics dedicated to SSE. And this is essential. And uh, otherwise, we're going to conduct research 
with uh, indicators that were not on the agenda initially. And a few years ago, we worked on Senegal from uh, the general census of uh, businesses in Senegal. And this census did not include cooperative businesses, but it was on social businesses. And uh, the, the, with the analysis, we observed that social businesses only participate at around 11% of GDP in Senegal. And this survey dates back to three years. So let me finish by saying that we also have the area, and Chantal rightly uh, mentioned that, the training on social and solidarity economy led by ministries, by territorial uh, collectivities, but also carried out by research and university centers. What is the status of training to SSE? And I'm happy to announce that within the laboratory where I work, we are in partnership with the Ministry of Microfinance and Social and Solidarity Economy. We have developed a manual with 20 training modules destined to SSE actors. And uh, in the weeks to come, we'll be able to kickstart this uh, training session destined to SSE players and partners from the ministry. Therefore, it's important to work on the design of social uh, sheets in order to monitor the impact within collective and social companies, but also to draw up the humanization in businesses and uh, around uh, corporate social responsibility. And yes, Professor, so tra transforming economic uh, economies to social economies is an issue. And to get there, we need to avoid talking about formalization but we should rather consider that this transformation will actually include sound growth of uh, SSE companies, informal companies, and for that, the contribution of SSE is around uh, values. So values of territorial anchoring, values of participation, values of like ethical values but also limited lucrativity these are essential elements to build the economic and uh, social identity so what is the solution so that uh, the new challenges on research on social and solidarity economy be achieved for sustainable development it seems to me that a major element lies in what we can call scientific entrepreneurship which should be developed within research institutions in a way to develop autonomy which will allow us to mobilize the necessary resources for the financing and the implementation of research program this was my final word and i thank you for your kind attention right at, at 12. <laughs> <laughs> This is not chicken feet. Yeah. <laughs>
of uh, social and uh, solidarity economy before talking about the three main topics on the contribution of uh, SEC, but also decent work, but also formal economy, uh, transition from public uh, priority policies, but also the agenda, research agenda, and uh, to start taking into account uh, of all the discussions that we have had uh, uh, to make sure they are part of a general topic of the current context in which we are. The current context is a paradoxical because on the one hand, we are experiencing the most extraordinary te technological innovation of, it, of all times, uh, which is an important uh, uh, source in the economy, in finance, and in the world, in communication, in technologies. We can say, we can go to Mars, we can go to the moon, uh, but we do not have, we haven't had the capacity to guarantee, which is basic, which means food, uh, habitat, uh, a decent world. And uh, culture for the largest uh, class of our population, the current context is dedicated, uh, has uh, derived from a model of development, a development model which has the capacity to generate a lot of wealth but also a, a capacity to distribute that wealth for the large uh, part of the population, of the world population. We are trying, when we talk about sustainable development, to, uh, because we are in front of a model which is not sustainable. In terms of environment, with a lot of data, I had the opportunity to work as an observer at many international meetings and as a member of the UN Task Force. And I have worked for more than 10 years as a collaborator of the uh, uh, ILO and in other agencies of the social and solidarity economy. Uh, work coordinated by Antonella, who told you about OEDC in another context, in an, a global atmosphere. So, I'm not and uh, the social and uh, solidarity economy. So, um, brother, talking about the social and solidarity economies is because there are many of them at the international level. SEC in America, in Latin America, with its own specificities. In Africa, also, you have a lot of specificities. Huh? in all the parts of the world, in Asia, yes. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to, to know and learn uh, from the different uh, SACs, uh, but, but there is a, a segment with different names in line with the history, the culture, the political training. We have oper common operational principles that unite us all 
in terms of governance, participative government, participation of the people who uh, do, are doing the work on the territories, uh, the cooperatives, the associations, uh, the savings associations, the uh, community development banks, and in the clubs, uh, in the seeds uh, associations, in the family, family farming systems. This is SAC. They can show us the uh, capacities of, uh, but also symbolically, social and solidarity economies uh, shall be strengthened because uh, some of them are fragile. So they need to be strengthened be, to have the capacity to generate new working conditions, uh, better relationship between people, and uh, production models. And we are also trying to raise all the hurdles, but anyway, there are real conditions, practical conditions uh, to work through associations uh, in some cooperatives, uh, like what we are doing now. And uh, I'm telling you that I've been fortunate to work on uh, globally or locally, because in the universities, there are research uh, uh, units uh, uh, to see what the universities can do outside the university uh, sphere. And uh, in Brazil, I am a, a professor at the economy department, one of the most important uh, uh, university in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. And we are currently uh, fighting to to give value to work uh, done at the university, research uh, to put them into practice. And uh, we have we have uh, economies have a heart because we have some friends who do not have a heart. They write magnificent papers, but which are not connected to the capacity of confronting real problems in the communities where they live. So we need to change the mentality about the economy. We should rethink our conception of the economy. In the economics courses that I teach uh, in, uh, in the first year, uh, uh, the definition of what we call economics uh, is to maximize the well-being of the communities, to optimize a production. And man to avoid using uh, child labor and avoid deteriorating the environment. Uh, so our knowledge in relation to research, uh, where education and research in uh, SAC are uh, gaining ground with an important presence of we have to be more uh, objective in the way we work. So it is important to be in relationship with uh, uh, public policies. Public policies in uh, the light of what I have seen. Uh, uh, we worked in international academies, part of public economies, uh, wherever there are public, uh, veritable public policies, uh, successful public policies. And from 
bottom to top. They are not done in the offices uh, and, uh, and then pass on to the people to put them in practice. Those policies are built collaboratively with the territories, with the people who understand uh, the demand, uh, social demands, the uh, cultural, economic, political demands of the territories and uh, uh, could be uh, the state politics and not the government's politics. Uh, uh, so, so we should try. And, and thirdly, those policies uh, should be cross-cutting uh, policies. I cannot understand SAC as uh, something that is uh, uh, of today, it should communicate permanently with the, the educational system, health, the justice system, and human rights, with the gender issues, and this shows the way to follow, and what are the objectives of uh, uh, the sustainable development. So we are working with, uh, in our project, uh, with those communities because we have a clear idea of the con necessary connections of the cross-cutting dimension uh, 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 in order to generate product and services uh, for other people and for generations to come uh, to create jobs and, and to have the capacity to participate uh, uh, positively carrying out conversation with the environment uh, in a more humane and uh, sustainable manner. I'm talking about public policies where the priority should be to integrate the public policies in all the different ministries because SSC won't be understood uh, as uh, something to only to face uh, the poor marginalized population simply because we have an, an economic model which is not relevant. So we need to develop family agriculture, uh, community production with um, capacity building in order to produce quality food for the communities. So this is a challenge, uh, it's a global challenge, global and local. And uh, also research, in my opinion, as there are people who are involved in research since I started, that I have uh, developed other a qualified researcher, I think we still need to work and uh, develop our concepts because you know, you know, nowadays there are a lot of terminology, uh, collaborative, uh, green economy, uh, creative economy, terms with new terms which are in connection with the social and solidarity economy, but which are not all social and economy sol uh, ec solidarity economy. So I, I think we need to understand what we're talking about. And, and to avoid being what we are not. Secondly, the epistemic point is important. We need and we agree, uh, some people saying it, many uh, saying that we should uh, progress in relation to the data, and this is an important data in the SSC, because uh, we don't want to work with the traditional method methods. So we should make sure we generate something, uh, emanci emancipation, uh, so how can we work this uh, mix of methodology qualitatively and quantitatively to demonstrate the social impact of what we are doing? We need uh, 
to deepen and uh, reinforce uh, the experiences, national, regional experiences. And there is an event like this one, which was very important for us to change and exchange uh, experiences, not only experiences, or success stories, but also to change uh, because uh, from there we can see the fragilities and what are the challenges. Uh, we should work in the, uh, the with the idea of having indigenous development for the uh, social and uh, solidarity economies and how we can connect the government, the universities, uh, the real participants of the cooperatives and the association, for them to have the possibility to say, for, for them to, for that to be an, a dialogue, interaction with reciprocity in the academic knowledge and popular knowledge. We should connect education to research and what we call in Brazil the extension in uh, to practical actions from the university to the communities so we should think of the internationalization of uh, SAC uh, thinking globally will be stronger thinking globally and uh, in order to confront all the world challenges, uh, social innovation, social technology. We see a lot of importance in that to understand the topic. And, and, uh, and the relationship is the legislation and the uh, normative uh, intimate. So we're leaving uh, this uh, conference with an ag agenda to engage and uh, we should leave here happy to have understood that with the United Nations that resolution, we are a world team and we work collectively uh, locally and internationally. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Your mic. On uh, Thanks uh, to Professor Abdul Sata. Oh. Uh, as an economist, we are economists. who are, we are happy refugees in public uh, policy schools, uh, in management or in the uh, departments of sociology or economics. And one of the challenges that we have in research and in the universities uh, is to embark uh, economists uh, with us I would like to congratulate you, Professor Abdul Salam Fal, for what you have done uh, at the university here to expand uh, the dialogue, interdisciplinary dialogue. And uh, I remember the long discussions that I had with Professor Paul Sanger, and I went to Sao Paulo with the incubators, which has become a model uh, copied, adapted in Montreal, in our university, I think that research, we talk about partnership research with uh, actors and uh, representatives of uh, public administration, but uh, within the university institutions, we are still working in silo, disciplinary uh, silos. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so we are still looking for ways of embarking the economics. Uh, it is.
Uh, I am going to present in English. Je suis present our, our last speaker, uh, Madame Colombia Perez um, Munoz uh, from Colombia. Thank you. Bueno, ante todo, quiero agradecer por la invitación a este importante foro. He sido seguidora de todas sus versiones y quiero resaltar la importancia que tienen este tipo de espacios para el fortalecimiento del pensamiento colectivo de la economía social y solidaria. Yo creo que en esta versión se ve cómo a lo largo de los años se ha ido construyendo ese pensamiento colectivo, cómo tenemos un cerebro colectivo que permite posicionar discursos y prácticas en todos los continentes, eh, en una cierta unidad de criterios, pero respetando la gran diversidad y la riqueza que tiene la economía social y solidaria. Y en este momento que me toca intervenir después de unas interesantes eh, participaciones del director de investigación de la Universidad de Dakar, donde hace, que hace énfasis en esa ciencia abierta eh, que permite democratizar el conocimiento y acceder tam y también que exige escenarios de apropiación social de conocimiento para todas las comunidades y aquellos que están interesados en los diferentes temas. Veo unos puntos de confluencia, como también con mi colega eh, Leandro de la Universidad de Sao Paulo de Brasil. Entonces, quiero reorientar mi, mi presentación comenzando por la primera pregunta que se nos hizo, y es cómo la economía social y solidaria contribuye a ese trabajo decente. Y en esto tendríamos que resaltar que en la medida en que el modelo económico que promueve la economía social y solidaria es un modelo centrado en las personas y en los valores de la solidaridad, la cooperación, la ayuda mutua, la gestión democrática. Uh, for some years now we have a, a, an important role to get to a decent work and uh, I wanted to uh, lay, uh, give evidence of some realities. It's uh, first of all, it's an economic model that creates and preserves uh, quality jobs. Uh, and talking of quality, we mean uh, work that respects working conditions, uh, dignified working conditions, mainly for groups who need uh, uh, who needs uh, social inclusion. So groups who are in vulnerable conditions, mostly for men and women. I also wanted to insist on the fact that uh, uh, social and solidarity economy should reinforce uh, workers' uh, uh, social protection and their, their families. And in addition to the workers and the impact, uh, we can have access to basic uh, services such as health, education, accommodation, food. <coughs> and there is a, a security system uh, taking into account all the professional risk and other uh, related problems to the uh, the world of work. SAC, in addition to territorial and local development, uh, uh, me, uh, satisfies the needs and, uh, and takes into account the, the potentialities of all in terms of resources and well-being. So, and finally, it would be great there is another in relation with decent work. This may uh, promote social dialogue and democratic participation among workers. So SSE 
we actually we are in this this association we think that we can participate in the development of public policies so this is a model through all can allow us to to have a social interest in relation with equitable trade and uh, social and solidarity economy creates protects uh, social development it actually helps to create uh, conditions not only for uh, we but also for gener future generations now we are asked if uh, in this context uh, in which we are living is it uh, the transition towards uh, informality so it's an important reflection so sometimes there are formal uh, systems sometimes it's informal so this is a complex process and multi-dimensional this uh, involve uh, challenges for workers for businesses and this is not a, a matter of white and black we don't know if it's uh, desirable or undesirable I think we need to get closer to the various type of uh, possible uh, research we need to see what what works better so what is obvious is that uh, from formalization we'll have some benefits to access uh, the uh, right of labor we need to avoid vulnerability and precariousness uh, conditions these businesses may be more competitive because they will access information, financing, and uh, a favorable environment. So access to credit in relation with innovation and cooperation. And this is going to be very important. So generally speaking, this formalization contributes to putting public revenues and actors are being more and more active with regard to social dialogue which is generated in this context. I equally want to further insist on the challenges that all this involve. First of all, we need to guarantee uh, participation and uh, empowerment of workers, recogni recognizing their contribution with regard to social and economic uh, development. Most of the economies in 60 or 50 or 50 percent. So in a country it fluctuates around this percentage. So the informal side is very important. In Colombia we're talking about six million people that are active in the informal sector and therefore we need a strategy to recognize all these associations and we should create conditions so that they participate. In this regard, we consider that uh, so policies that what to, what to exclude that do not want to formalize, I think, some do not want to formalize because they can do it. I think we need to respect each and everybody's needs and promote education, emancipation, knowledge, sensitization in the face of new uh, models. For example, solidarity economy can be a beginning to take uh, the decision of formalizing all this. We need to adapt the policies and regulations to the diversity and capacity of the various uh, sectors and with regard to their concern, basically. This uh, involves that uh,
we need a uniformist approach to actually generate uh, revenue so on uh, all these economies i think we cannot we should not be in uniformity what are the public policies that we need to prioritize In this uh, public policy universe, we need to look for those that are doing regulation, redistribution, and those that want to to reduce inequalities. We need priority policies, those that are in relation with uh, legal recognitions, We see that the various countries uh, oftentimes have uh, existing policies, but how about r regulation is uh, slowing down everything, and there is no harmonization. We have to develop. Uh, it's not symmetric. It does not generate synergy. It's important to have policies in relation with uh, public policies so that SSE be taken into account. So we need to have access to public markets. It's also important to have uh, that we recognize uh, SSE as an actor. So we need sustainable inclusive development so we need to generate social cohesion. Another uh, policy has to be in relationship with uh, economic integration. We need to determine uh, solidarity economy. Sometimes uh, we meet groups uh, who are in, in vulnerable conditions or policy that are interested in people with disability that recognize the potentialities uh, for sustainable development. So those that are in relation with with the specific uh, economic sector, and we see here the importance of having new uh, business models. We have culture, we have trade, we have uh, cooperative, at the legislation, uh, they are so in some countries uh, it did not work. In this uh, regard, I agree with Alain Alejandro so that uh, this uh, formulation of public policy. We actually should talk about construction, co-production, and the various players of uh, the social economy should uh, generate uh, exercises from uh, with an interaction in order to have the desired impact. After analyzing all these various uh, aspects, I think uh, I must uh, talk about research. Research helps to reaffirm and define and create uh, conditions for the various points I mentioned earlier on. Therefore, we are in a SSE model which is interdisciplinary, we, and this contributes to transforming knowledge. This solidarity economy should be more democratic, more inclusive, and more sustainable. I agree with, uh, with that the, we talked about the majority of priorities, and the first one is to conceptualize and define social and solidarity economy in order to recognize these borders 
and not put it in the same bag. I think there is so so I consider that it's uh, important and I'm repeating that this priority of developing methodology tools to measure the impact uh, data that are well illustrated and this has been brought out by several workshops and it's interesting to see that uh, research to have new models should be done. So social innovation, the involvement uh, and regulation, education, and even the management of this uh, new uh, trade model. It, to finish, it's important to, in, in addition to research, I agree that when uh, we talk, we don't talk about best practices, but practical experiences. So I think it's important that we can share with communities and so that we can. So dialogue is important, especially dialogue with people on uh, the ground. And I think all this is in relation with uh, research models on action, on participation. And I would like to highlight, to finish, the importance of uh, youth participation. And I would like uh, to give the example of the youth. I will, will wish to express uh, and say that and say how we need to develop uh, formative research models and this is the best uh, pedagogical strategy to sensitize them to educate them and to get a, a connection we need to have with our young people in our university for example we uh, deliver uh, SSE uh, courses in all disciplines. We sensitize uh, people on SSE. We see that we have two types of students. We have students who know what uh, SSE can bring in their disciplines. And we have students who want to do SSE and we have research seminars and we were able to to make sure that they learn something they need to deepen uh, that and the research model will allow us to get in contact with communities to have a, a respectful dialogue so the university is promoting dialogues and these young people get uh, new professional horizons and uh, new horizon of a generation of businesses is uh, exercise. So therefore we have young people that are starting proposing The new uh, trades that we did not have, and uh, and through SSE we have new models that they that they invent. They get in. They are innovative, and now we get to the. I think at some point the university should integrate the various uh, lines. We need to buttress the potential of SSE in order to generate an economic and sol solidarity integration in territories and to also have sustainable development. This was a call, a special call for this training for young people so that they get a generational uh, connection and we can we should learn from them 
and uh, there should be a continuity and we should continue uh, doing this and we have uh, social transformation uh, opportunities. Bien, merci beaucoup à nos trois euh, intervenants. Euh, avec, euh, on voit bien. Thank you. Thank you for the interventions. So I think uh, we need to transform reality, and this is uh, what is at stake. It's about uh, connecting research, and they insisted on training. So the place of the youth, we see also the importance of the young people in Africa, and this is valid in all uh, continents. And I think if we want to invent the economy tomorrow, we need to actually build on them. We started a bit late, and lunch is around the corner, but let's take 15 minutes to get questions. If we have the roving microphone, could you circulate the microphone? So don't hesitate to raise your hand. I, we have someone here at the bottom. We're going to take a, a lot of questions in a row, and we'll, we'll invite people to answer very quickly. Is the microphone working? Thank you. I thank the two speakers for their relevance. We have learned a lot. My name is Fazil Mango. I'm part of the Gabon delegation. And quickly, I have a question around indicators that uh, were brought up by the previous panel. I think the measure of impact is the generally an issue, a major issue for actors and for decision makers. I would like to ask, what are the key indicators to consider to measure the impact of SSE on sustainable development and how research can contribute to their definition? Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour... Thank you for this question. Very interesting one indeed. Yes? Good morning, everyone. Allow me, first of all, to introduce myself. Uh, these are uh, moments of advocacy. My name is Madame Fatoumata Dem, Chair of the Network of uh, Senegalese Women for the promoting promotion of family planning. This is the best strategy to fight m maternal and uh, infantile mortality. And this is one of the, uh, the most important pillars for leveraging demographic dividend and this is a window of opportunity which is pr uh, produced when the ratio of active population with regard to the number of the population has increased so this is important and it is said that this uh, comes only once uh, in the life of a country so I would like to say that I'm chair of uh, executive director of the Forum of Parliamentarians uh, for Population and Development. And, and this brings together 65 members of parliament in Africa and Arab countries. My intervention will be on uh, a question. It's rather a question, but before that, I would like to ref come up with recommendations. The question is, is research dealing with on the nexus between uh, SSE and uh, leveraging demographic dividends and uh, SSE and uh, universal health coverage. For me, in my humble opinion, these are the foundation, the bedrock of sustainable development. And it's important to see the nexus between uh, these concepts 
and SSE, we, I would like to, to have topics on SSE and uh, leverage, leveraging of uh, dividend, I mean, uh, 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 demographic dividend. We often say that we are poor. We are not poor. So we have cultivated uh, poverty in Africa. For example, we have uh, mining uh, resources, natural resources, water resources. In particular, in Senegal, where I'm living, we have phosphates, we have gold, zircon. We have 430 kilometers of coast with all the fishery resources. Uh, we also have the knowledge, we have expertise, we have human resources of quality in all areas of expertise. I think what is lacking is to identify uh, strategies, innovative strategies uh, to implement uh, systems and mechanisms that will allow us to put all this uh, uh, wealth to the benefit of population and our social demographic development. Mara Sonia talked about the youth, and I think it's up to us to see how to encourage young people to undertake. Young people should dare undertake. They are the one uh, caring development and the future of our con continent. I think uh, we have to encourage them, we have to monitor them, to support them so that they can uh, actually carry the future of our continent. I thank you for these words. We have someone behind you. Would you proceed? Morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mulai Sek. I'm a street vendor, like street vendors, yes. I'm in the platform of workers from the informal economy. I have a couple of questions for the professors, Professor Abdusalam Fowl and uh, the Brazilian, I think it's Leo Andrado. So in brief, Leo, your uh, intervention so has uh, pleasantly surprised me because I often say that we uh, actors we have an issue with with uh, the academia. Every day they come up with a new concept. Before that, we were talking about underground economy, parallel economy, informal economy, and there is even a new uh, concept, social and solidarity economy. In our states here in Senegal, we have a problem with the government. Because before that, we had previously a Minister of uh, Trade responsible for the informal sector. But during the cabinet reshuffle, they strike out informal sector from the, this. And we say no, we stay two years without any interlocutor because street vendors um, and other branches of the informal sector, like people uh, uh, riding Jakartas. So f we finally do not have an interlocutor to actually talk to the state. And they, they come up with a Ministry and of Social and Solidarity Economy, and they have Ministry of Handicraft and the Transformation of the Informal Economy. That's why I would like to call upon you, to call upon you. you need to set up a concept. We need to, be, to, be, to have a stable concept. So we uh, do the same thing all the time, like we need to define new concept every 10 years we come up with a new concept so this is my question if we can if we want to succeed in SSE 
I think we need to insist on solidarity and generosity. Solidarity and generosity are two key words. Because with, without generosity, here in Senegal, more often than not, we, really, we put those street vendors in new sites. But we put us in a site which is not accessible. Nobody can see us in those sites. Authorities are not generous enough to give us uh, uh, visible, uh, visible spaces, like strategic points. If the, we have strategic spaces, I mean, they build, they build in there. But if it's actors of the informal sector, instead of resettling us to there, they put us in different spaces. <laughs> Thank you. Very, one last uh, question. So we have to move forward because uh, we're running out of time. Should I speak in English? Yes. Professor Yoshida from Hokkaido University in Japan. Uh, for the last gen generation, I've been working on the indigenous peoples across the globe, starting from the Ainu people, the indigenous people in Japan. Um, I think, generally speaking, the indigenous people across the globe are still marginalized, oppressed, and ostracized uh, from the global uh, economy. For example, last March, I was in Amazon. I, was, uh, I stayed in the indigenous village for uh, more than two weeks, uh, uh, who are uh, facing uh, deforestation and facing uh, uh, poisonous mercury uh, contamination. And uh, uh, I'm just wondering uh, uh, what kind of concrete and practical role uh, will social and uh, uh, solidarity economy will play to impre improve their uh, still oppressed uh, uh, indigenous peoples across the globe? That's my question. Thank you. Uh, I suggest uh, we take a last question from uh, Madame, who is just uh, behind me. Thank you. My name is Mami Diallo, Deputy Mayor of the city responsible for SSE. Thank you very much, dear professors, dear researchers, for your contribution. Thank you for your precious uh, contributions, because without research, we won't, will not go anywhere. So I would like to find out among the tools that you wish to use, like scientific tools you're using, to bring your contribution in uh, the promotion of SSE. Among the tools, uh, do, you, do you have the local development plan of SSE that the city has advocated? Did you use this plan in order to find the right way, the best uh, way for the development of uh, territories? Thanks to territorial coaching, which made it possible for the city of Dakar to have this uh, uh, local development uh, tool. How do you think you can use this tool for better results in your scientific analysis. I thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sek, we know him through his commitment for
uh, for a better consideration of problems uh, facing uh, actors with whom they working. So the president of uh, the informal sector actors who is representing 70% uh, of the national economy, the informal sector. And this means that they they are very important and maybe uh, they are not considered the, he, <laughs> he uh, uh, spoke deep from his heart saying that each time there is a new government they are not considered correctly. They, they, they don't find ourselves, they don't identify with the ministries and, and uh, which are reorganized. So they don't understand what's happening. So since they started to speak about their concerns, They've never been heard. Nobody listens to them. So they want to be, they, they, they request, demand for more consideration and responsibilities in the role they uh, are currently playing in the economy. And he is also demanding for, uh, to be given more visibility. As for the ministries, uh, the Villa Dakar, can not do much on the decision they can do, but is for Vilde Dakar, I think you've uh, met uh, the, director, the director, and we plan with the minister to find solutions together to meet your needs. Just give us some time. We have a program and uh, that we will try and discuss with you uh, in uh, relation to the spaces where you think you can develop your own businesses uh, without uh, over uh, uh, riding places uh, and affecting the environment. And you also have complained on the amount of uh, uh, subsidies that you receive. We'll try to extend to increase uh, the figure for the financing of your projects. Thank you, Madam. I think one last question in three seconds, because we have... Uh, uh, thank you very much for giving us the answer to answer, because we felt excluded when we talk about social and solidarity economy. You shouldn't exclude people. I think there is an exclusion process. In the many categories were excluded, and they were supposed to participate. You are doing research. You should allow us to, to do. The main problem we have is how to contextualize SAC from your research. Abdul Salam, who is here, has a I played the log. He is a sociologist and has always been uh, in the associative movement. We have come with an idea and we are in the uh, dynamic of uh, SSC, African Social Forum. How can we make sure we don't retake the speech of the donors? How is it possible to have an African charter? Oh social and solidarity economy taking into account the uh, concerns of uh, African African actors. What contribution, uh, what should be the contribution of the researchers that we can have from the African Union Charter? Thank you very much. And you have noticed that you have not been excluded and would like to thank you for this very interesting question. Uh, Mr. Fall, maybe to start. Thank you very much for your comments and questions. Uh, 
maybe I should answer to Honorable Fatumata Dem to indicate that on the issue of of the demographic dividend, there is a laboratory at the Chess University that is specialized uh, on West and Central Africa, working on developing a set of indicators uh, for monitoring to capture the demographic dividend. And uh, their work is uh, making much progress, and it is being monitored by the United Nations inst financial institutions uh, because they have developed a whole competence in the analysis, in introduction, generational analysis uh, to produce those indicators. And one of colleagues who is an, on the same laboratory who has gone to chess and who has set up that laboratory in uh, the Academy of Science of Senegal last year Professor Shahmbake, who is one of the best African demographs, he was awarded the prize of the best uh, uh, African demograph in the United States, has developed uh, a conference on uh, how to capture the uh, demographic dividend. And you're right that thanks to the demographic dividend, the African continent is considered as the the continent of the future because wherever this demographic dividend was transformed into a, an opportunity window, this has corresponded to the uh, uh, taking off of uh, those economies. So this is an important element which, is, which guides us and guides research in Africa. On the issue of, uh, of uh, health coverage, universal health coverage, I'm also happy to tell you that in those last days, we carried out four research programs, and I think you participated in the presentation of the research uh, done on the assessment of the whole protection policies uh, in Senegal with a critical uh, view on it, and uh, through two main programs where you were in impact programs, census program, funded by uh, the African development, uh, the French Development uh, Fund, and another program with the consumerist uh, three programs with three groups of people. Uh, in each group, you have through to four uh, NGOs, and we've also worked with associations with very uh, proving results that we have already uh, shared just to tell you that on this issue of uh, health, uh, universal health coverage, we are uh, having important results on, on nine regions in Senegal uh, that have been uh, uh, monitoring for three years now with uh, uh, funding from the European delegation, European Union delegation in Africa. And as for Mulai, the mayor has answered. I think what we have to understand is that on the part of the government, we are all embarked in learning, in working intersectionally, uh, sectorial, intersectoral. And it's a challenge for all the governments. Uh, and here, the government has uh, taken, uh, understands the importance of working, uh, setting up systems to work between different sectors and moving from incestized to dedicated spaces is also an important concern. I just wanted to, to conclude with uh, Madam the Mayor's question. Yes, we have highly appreciated the development of uh, territorial coaching. We have uh, worked in Kaulak in another commune, and we are very happy to have set up partnership with uh, Dakar municipality because there are research which are done scattered all over so engaging in a convention can help uh, monitoring and uh, uh, capitalizing uh, on those uh, so all what the uh, university institutions are doing in the city of Dakar I have uh, covered two PhDs and those two PhDs were centered on the city of Dakar and GBG is a uh, uh, taking me back to my old 
memories. It's been 43 years that I have been embarked my first work in 1980, 80 to 84, was as a community organizer in charge of say, uh, uh, installing cooperatives. And I'm happy to say that the cooperatives that I participated in mounting in banana production in the Tambacunda region and uh, Senegali is almost two-thirds autonomous, self-sufficient in terms of banana production. And when in 1980 we were totally dependent on the import uh, of uh, banana import in Senegal and those uh, 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 farming uh, plot uh, which are in Tambacuna. So I'm really happy to have worked on that. I'm also very happy that our, our laboratory has been directly associated in the design of the uh, sectorial uh, uh, political letter on uh, the development of social and uh, solidarity uh, uh, economy. And I'm also one of the uh, participants in uh, uh, writing the law on uh, uh, social and solidarity economy in Senegal, working with the ministry at the strategic plan, training and monitoring. And I'm very happy to uh, have kept uh, uh, an active activity, voluntary uh, for uh, SAC. IGB, the African Charter for SAC, is a challenge of the African group, uh, the, the African group on social and solidarity economy. The responsibles are in the room and they might be able to talk about it. I was one of the initiators of that, but democratic life requires that other people take over. And I'm really happy to see that there is one girl here who are working in that uh, movement, Madame So also. So the actors are here and they carry that fight, and I believe the fight continues. Thank you. I suggest we continue with Lambro. Uh, très bien. Uh, two minutes. Uh, two minutes. Uh, from the six questions, uh, the second and the six, number six, number two and number six, in relation with the territory, we, we talked about it. I talk about the others. As for the indicators, this is a real challenge uh, for SAC. As we all know, I am in a university where we try uh, to set up a, 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 a group of a working group on on that theme. And so we have a scientist uh, on an hybrid group of evaluation and based on the SDGs uh, and uh, in the light of the objectives that we have uh, developed. So we are currently in Brazil working from the ideas that we collected in Latin America, we are having regional discussions on, uh, on those uh, aspects. We ha have had different discussions with three countries. We have uh, reflected with and discussed with uh, researchers, practitioners, and also people who are in that type of economy. So we are on the verge of having in three months uh, those indicators. Uh, uh, as for number five, uh, for the local uh, development uh, and territorial plan, we I have uh, I teach one subject at the university it's called plan and Devo local development plan, and uh, which have, we have started in order to work with quantitative indicators and uh, we carry out interviews uh, with uh, political leaders in order to uh, to consider the uh, local specificities and and starting with that matrix we will try 
and uh, uh, start a more uh, concrete uh, work in each territory. As for the platform, uh, I think we should uh, pay more attention uh, to that. Uh, the population works uh, in the formal sector we have. Uh, so we should work in the prospect of solidarity economic uh, for to see changes in the, uh, in the world of work. Uh, we do not only have the capacity to generate uh, standard uh, so we have challenges uh, in terms of thinking of new forms of work. So this is an important challenge. As for the, the theme, we have experience. We do not have pay enough attention to uh, cultural aspects. No, we have the ministry in charge of the indigenous people uh, to see their uh, uh, practices in terms of uh, social and, and solidarity economy. They have been practicing it. There is a concept. They are practicing it without uh, uh, using the context the, the, uh, uh, and, uh, and the dialogue with the people who are working. They are not uh, university professors, but they have got the most important knowledge uh, uh, on, uh, on that. So we need to communicate with those indigenous people, and uh, we collaborate with them in the Amazon region where I stay sometimes for some time in order to understand how they work on sustainable development. We have indigenous uh, communities, so we try to understand sustainable development. So we'll invite them to uh, come to the Amazonian Federal University and uh, organize some internship. Uh, we receive some groups. Uh, they, uh, so to understand the reality of sustainable development out of the concept. We study the consumer habits Try to understand what they are doing, what is the reality of sustainable development. It's something that we can do, and that could be interesting. I will stop here because we have time constraints. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I uh, would like to refer to three points that I have uh, drawn my attention uh, in relation to the question that were raised. Impact measurement uh, is difficult because we don't know which indicators is varied. It depends on the experience. So what I what I would like to insist on is uh, to, to create a culture in impact measurement to could be measured differently because uh, uh, for the time being, uh, I think we should give the priority to quantitative uh, measurement uh, uh, systems. And I don't know how many interventions in the community, uh, how many people have uh, benefited from it. The figures are the one that we consider to be the result of the exercise of, uh, in terms of social interaction. Now we are trying uh, to set up a paradigm to see so there will be uh, the necessity to, to decide what is an effect and what is an impact to see what is happening. So to see how, what results will come based on the actions uh, in the short term and uh, the effect that uh, 
make sure that the communities are the actors. And we are, and the impact after the exercise, we start uh, understanding the different values and factors to take into account in the social process. So this will be seen in the long term. But there is a whole culture, and uh, we need to put this in the exercise that we are doing in the formulation and work that we are leading from research. And so to have a, a special model, we should also be careful from those uh, measurement models, impact measurement models. And what could Professor Dakanda would say? And work with the indigenous population is an opportunity to move forward on this uh, uh, social and solidarity economy. It's a, a community uh, uh, an exercise that can help save uh, the indigenous community, like uh, uh, exchanging goods. Indigenous practices that talk about solidarity, mutual help, and we should make them more visible and transmitting them uh, in a very interesting manner. Uh, uh, at the university, for example, no, nous avons campuses where the indigenous uh, uh, ideology is very strong. And from there, we have learned uh, in those dialogues uh, a knowledge where exchange of good could be included in uh, the social practice and in those uh, uh, bartering and exchanges of, of services. We should try and reinforce the uh, cooperation between the cooperatives and the university in the uh, and to conclude uh, in relation to what what the lady uh, was uh, saying on the territorial coaching. I would like to insist on the fact that this project, we call it Solidarity Territories. And we go beyond the dialogue, we, and beyond the diagnosis. Generally, the researchers uh, stop at the diagnosis. They, they produce their paper. So we want like, the cycle to be full cycle. Uh, once we have got to the di di diagnostic, we should have consulted uh, plans to uh, define a role uh, to facilitate this articulation and contribute to uh, the empowerment of the of the stakeholders. systematized measures to have stronger learning. We are in the universities. And it is important that in those spaces, uh, we not only do, do not limit ourselves to doing research, It is, uh, we continue to learn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have reached the end of this panel. And I would like to thank uh, the uh, uh, technology and the translation which has facilitated uh, the uh, success of this panel. Thank you to all and thank you to our 
people, the pre-panelists. I think this was an excellent roundtable. Thank you very much for your contributions, and thank you to the audience. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite you now to go for your lunch. Thank you very much. We'll be back at 3.30. Okay, 3.30 for the closing ceremony.